Hello, hello, hello. Uh, my name is Felix. I'm from Ledger. Um, today we're going to be doing a live onboarding, if you guys aren't already aware. Um, if you guys have any questions, uh, as my colleague would have mentioned, uh, you can pop them straight into the chat um, and he'll be uh, down there looking to answer your questions there going forward. Uh, just a couple of things that I normally mention would be things that you all would have heard before would have been uh, please 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 don't give out your 24 words and uh, please don't sign any transactions you don't trust but uh, to get straight to it today um, just going to be going over a couple of things that we'd be doing in terms of uh, getting your device set up i think some of the main things in particular are going to be how do we install uh, applications uh, specifically because uh, it is something that you might want to do um, with you know your with ledger live or you might want to do that in particular with uh, any third party um, third party wallets as well and it's actually something that I'm actually going to go through in particular at this stage so uh, let me just pause my notifications so we'll do that and then we'll go from there now with regards to uh, getting your device set up, what I've actually done is uh, got my uh, new Ledger Live set up. You can see that here. Um, I'm sure you guys uh, would have seen this screen before. If you guys haven't, I'm assuming uh, you know you might need to download Ledger Live. You can actually go through uh, some of our older videos um, that. Uh, potentially goes into that. Uh, one of my colleagues, Dan, also uh, does mention that as well. But let's say you've installed Ledger Live, uh, you have your device set up with a recovery phrase. Now that's the other thing uh, that you'd also uh, have to do to get set up. Uh, what I was gonna go through is actually getting set up with third-party wallets, so in terms of uh, other applications and things like that. So first thing we'd actually do, um, being that, let's say, for example, we don't want to use, uh, uh, you know, the Ledger Live. Uh, let's say if we wanted to do something else, uh, but we wanted to, let's say, manage uh, our assets through um, a third-party EVM wallet. Uh, my, Le my Ledger device is locked, so I'll unlock this. First, because I'm going to manage, I want to manage, uh, let's say, Ethereum, Polygon, uh, network coins, that kind of thing, uh, EVM in particular. Uh, then I'm going to want to install the Ethereum application. So we'll just jump into the My Ledger section, which is on the left-hand side. Uh, make sure we allow the Ledger Secure Connection um, to uh, to jump in there and install the applications. Uh, so yeah, keep popping those questions in. Questions uh, we'll have some of my colleagues answer that in the chat as well. Uh, but if I get through to the end, uh, we'll actually uh, go through and actually um, try to answer them on stream as well if I have time. So you can see here, the Ethereum uh, application is here and we just hit install. I've got my Ledger Nano X with me in particular um, and we can get that installed right now. Just updated that today. So. Once we get that installed, I normally, I think I've mentioned this on stream before, the kind of thing that I uh, normally equate the application to isn't necessarily something that you have the, the coins in. Um, I actually uh, pre-got this article in particular uh, about where are your coins. Um, and it's a great article. Um, I'm actually just gonna pop that into the chat in general, uh, just so you guys uh, have an idea for that in particular. If you guys are uh, following along, you can click on that as well. Um, basically, the reason I wanted to go through this is because um, the Ledger application, so the Ethereum application, the Bitcoin application, any of those things, these are going to be essentially kind of like books that the Ledger device kind of uh, uses to kind of understand how to interact with the blockchain. And so it's not the actual assets that are on uh, the device. It's actually the uh, recovery phrase that's on the device and therefore through a, a deterministic uh, derivation it gets the public and private keys. And the public keys essentially, for lack of a better uh, analogy, would be essentially like an address. Your private key is essentially what you use to sign the transaction and it's the thing that you need to keep secret um, to make sure that you're the only one that can sign transactions at that address. So that's 
uh, how I normally explain it when I speak uh, uh, to uh, people that I speak to about the devices. And so just while I've been rambling there, you can see that Ethereum application has been installed. What I might do as well, um, since we can probably get into other kinds of uh, um, third-party wallets as well, let's install the uh, Cardano uh, uh, application because there are also third-party wallets that you can use for uh, Cardano um, as well as, uh, let's use, let's do Solana as well. Um, and let's do last one, Tron. Uh, let's not get too ahead of ourselves and we'll go from there. Now, essentially, once, when, once I install all of these uh, applications, let's, uh, we can jump on and, uh, you know, find uh, the specific uh, um, wallets that I want to use. Now, one thing that I did want to mention as well before um, I did that, um, I actually uh, pre-set up a little Jamboard. Um, and basically, what I wanted to go through uh, as well is that the reason that uh, I, I like to think that it's the recovery phrase that's on the device in particular, and it's not the um, and it's not you know the assets in particular. Is we do hear you know, I do see uh, see some customers maybe getting confused that they've got different recovery phrases they can't access an address. So I wanted to address this really specifically so that you guys might have a little bit of a better idea. If I have you know one ledger device and I have it, uh, and I have, you know, set it up with, with recovery phrase A. When I therefore go and add an account, so the account uh, that I add in Ledger Live uh, here, so I, in this case, I'd be going to the add accounts uh, here. It would always correspond, uh, let's say in this case, to account address A. So let's just do that. And then you, if you're not already aware, you can actually create a, large, large number of accounts. So they might, let's say it's a recovery phrase A and we would create address A and address B. My ledger to two device, you know, it corresponds to address C, uh, address D as well, right? Now, if that's the case, what would happen if I, you know, reset the device A and now that has recovery phrase B? It, just because ledger, one had recovery phrase A and generated, quote unquote, uh, address A and address B, or the recovery phrase A uh, at the time. Now that we've set it up with a recovery phrase B, this would now correspond with address C and address D. So it's about the recovery phrase that you set on the device that corresponds to the particular address, right? So you can, you know, the, the recovery phrases that you generally can use uh, can actually be you know switched around you can use the same recovery phrase even for the same device so let's say if uh, this was actually recovery phrase a as well um, then you could, both of these devices would actually be managing the same addresses right and that's perfectly fine. You can have both of your devices. You can have one, you know, with uh, a family member, one with yourself, and then they can both manage the same addresses um, going forward. You just have to kind of be wary if you guys are doing it at the exact same time. For, for example, um, you might come up with some uh, weird uh, things in particular. But generally speaking, you know, especially if you're using it yourself, um, you might have different recovery phrases uh, for each of the device. Uh, as well, so that that kind of hopefully gives you a better idea for how the recovery phrase derives um, the ledger device in particular, uh, how the recovery phrase derives the addresses rather, and therefore um, how it is you determine you know which addresses that you have access to. Um, so, without that uh, little bit of a tangent, um, let's. Uh, I know that we've already gone through how to add an account on a. Uh, on Ledger Live, but let's quickly add that in. So we get an idea. What I wanted to do is get the specific address potentially uh, that we might be able to add. So let's say um, we are going to add, you know what? Let's uh, start off with uh, one that I normally don't use, being that I normally use Ethereum. Oops, there we go. I will. Um, I will use Cardano this time. 
Um, just chose that on a whim. There we go. And then that way we can kind of compare which uh, which address might appear first or that kind of thing. So I understand, you know, so you guys might be able to better understand what that might be. Um, just see a question that I can answer right now. Um, uh, Sin Xiao Ri, uh, I can confirm indeed that uh, Charles is part of the team. Um, then you can share the info. Um, don't share any info, you know, in terms of like private keys or recovery phrase or anything like that. I think we always mention, uh, but they should be able to, um, uh, but you should be able to post like, you know, uh, other things potentially. Uh, helps in an article, they'll be, uh, Charles will be provided is exactly uh, correct. So exactly right. So, yeah. All right. Okay, we've got Cardano up and uh, just to get an idea, let's just make sure we can get an address from that first um, as well. Boom. No, yes, definitely don't do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, since Yari, I hope you are not joking with that. I hope you are joking with that rather. So now we've got the my uh, first address here for my Cardano. Let's just save this. Um, in uh, here, uh, just so I have this for later viewing. Uh, boom, okay. Now, what I said before, I was going to actually, um, let's confirm this, I was actually going to add a um, third party wallet for multiple, um, for multiple, uh, and be able to manage my third party wallets. So the first one, uh, manage my addresses with third-party wallets. The first one I wanted to go through was uh, Tellyho. I do go through MetaMask all the time. You can see it on, uh, I don't think you can see it actually, but I have it on the top right-hand side of my uh, instance of Chrome. But I actually wanted to go through something that uh, maybe we don't go through as much, maybe um, just to uh, offer potential alternatives. So this is uh, something that you can use for a lot of EVM uh, networks in particular. Um, right now, I'm just gonna quickly go through and add that as well, add that extension and go from there. All right. And then I will soon be able to see um, that it's come up. Now, it's on the top right hand side. What I'm going to do is you can see that it's come up here. Um, and it says, welcome to Tahoe. Now, remember what I've actually done. Um, I know I jumped ahead and I had a Cardano address first. Um, so uh, hopefully that didn't confuse you, but in this case, uh, this is for uh, Ethereum based network. So generally speaking, they might start with zero X. All right, so let's continue and let's try to get ourselves uh, uh, set up. So you can actually see when I wanna add an account, I can import my recovery phrase, which is not something we generally recommend. And the reason for that is because if you were going to do this, then if your computer were to be compromised, then potentially some, someone could try and access uh, that recovery phrase um, from your uh, extension. And we've actually, and the dev ledger devices have actually been built in such a way that um, in the event that uh, your computer was potentially compromised that you should still should be able to manage your assets uh, to some extent. Um, so, or at least um, not expose your assets to being compromised. And so um, how that would work is that um, essentially both Ledger Live and uh, third party wallets like Tally Ho uh, essentially ask the Ledger device to sign a transaction and the recovery phrase and therefore the private keys, they actually never leave the device. That way you can know that they always remain offline and, and that you're always generally going to be secure as long as you don't sign any transactions that are really sketchy. So that's uh, how we'd go forward with that one. Now let's connect the ledger device. Uh, I'm just gonna jump in here. Um, I already have just opened my Ethereum application there. I'm actually, just because I've just reset this device, I'm actually just going to turn on uh, blind signing in particular. Um, and just jump back. And then now we can just uh, hit open and you can see it says Tahu wants to connect. Um, and then we can connect our Ledger Nano X accordingly. 
and boom, you can see all of my addresses there. Now you can see the derivation path that we are using, and this is another potential issue that uh, you might encounter if, let's say, you've uh, sent Ethereum to um, a derivation path uh, that might not normally be uh, managed with Ledger Live. So let's say if I've sent Ethereum on, so on Ethereum mainnet, so on the Ethereum network, to a VeChain uh, address, right? I'll actually have to double check uh, VeChain uh, derivation path. I don't remember that right off the top of my head, but essentially we can say, hey, um, if, uh, if I've sent it to the wrong derivation path, these addresses won't correspond because the derivation path, you can see here, uh, 40, 4, 60, uh, x, 0, 0, just as an example for a derivation path where x is the index here that's being iterated. Um, they won't, they won't be the same. So you can see here 0x253fa0. Let's, if I go to Trezor, the first one will remain the same uh, because it's zeros all the way down, but these ones won't necessarily be the same. You can see here, right? And this will be um, the same, for example, if I go to legacy, um, they're going to be different as well, right? And so it's important that if you're sent, if you've actually sent, you know, a uh, an asset, let's say Ethereum, now it's on Ethereum, the Ethereum network, so you've sent it via uh, the Ethereum mainnet, I'm not sure how else to, uh, else to simplify that, um, then you would want, to, you'd be able to manage it within a, uh, a wallet like this, but it might, if it's been sent to a VeChain address, so with a VeChain derivation path, then we might need to actually set up, a, let's say in this case, a custom derivation path, or um, depending on your scenario, we might have to know which derivation path we've sent it to. And that might take um, you to contact us if necessary, if you, um, you can actually Google that online as well and see uh, what that would be. Now, I'm just going to quickly double check um, what derivation path it would be. VeChain 818, actually. Now I just saw it when I was going there. So we go 44818, let's say um, 00. And then we can add in uh, uh, Ethereum vet, Ether vet. So let's just add that in. And then we're going to just try again, actually, if I remember correctly. I'm not sure. We'll see that. Boom. And you can see the uh, the accounts there, um, and that would be different as well if we go boom. And I think I actually cancelled it when I added it in. Test uh, boom. Essentially, adding a derivation path would be important. Add if you wanted to. Oops. Let's see if I can just do something totally random. Okay, there we go. The reason that you might want to add custom derivation paths, like I mentioned, is if you've actually sent it to a wrong address, for example, that kind of thing. And this might be why you need to get um, an address in this manner. So just a really kind of niche situation that I wanted to go through. Hopefully it gives you a better uh, understanding of uh, how the ledger device works and how you know it gets your address um, now it's not in ledger live it's not on the it's not uh, you know it's all based on the uh, the recovery phrase and it derives uh, the addresses from with that and the conjunction with the derivation path as well but enough rambling let's sit and connect those as well and then we'll be able to uh, close this tab and then we can go back and I can just open tallyho accordingly. All right, and you can see that there, I can just close this uh, for now. And you can see I can send receive if I need to from uh, this particular address. And you can also see that you might be able to change the particular um, the particular networks that I, I manage on as well. So a bit of a more niche issue uh, that I mentioned there. But next one, let's just go to another wallet. Um, one that I don't have added in. Let's go to Eternal, All right? Um, let's, boom, let's go there. Now, Eternal would be the same, a, a similar process. Um, I think I added in a 
let's have a look here. All right. Let's add in our new wallet going forward. So this is eternal. You can see actually my personal one there with my huge, huge bag. Um, let's add in a wallet as well. And you can create, you can see create a new wallet. Again, this would be similar. Uh, if you wanted to get something new, you can restore with a recovery phrase you can see here, but of course we have a hardware wallet here with us as well. So in this case, if I'm going to be adding a third party wallet for Cardano, we would be wanting to open the Cardano app. So the corresponding application based on uh, the asset or network we're trying to uh, manage. So I actually put in the wrong phrase here. Um, and then we're going to be able to select the application and then log in. Uh, pretty, generally speaking, pretty simple, but I mean, um, if you guys have uh, any questions around this or any issues, definitely you can let us know. You can always jump onto Twitter. Uh, you can always um, reach out to us, support.ledger.com or something like that, and we can try to um, help you out with any way, uh, in any way we can. So you can see here, um, I've got my Ledger Nano X um, here, and I can continue, um, create one account, now, in this case, I'm connecting via USB, and you can see, you can already see my HID device as well. Now, boom, just uh, save that in particular, and once that's done, it'll take a little while, and it'll create a new wallet, and there we go. Um, and you can see here all the details uh, about what tokens I have, UTXOs, and the accounts uh, that I have as well. So everything like that. So you can kind of repeat all of these steps, not only for, you know, MetaMask, for TallyHo, Rabi is another option for EVM change, Soulflare, um, Ledger's board, Soulflare. Uh, Soulflare is another one. Um, Phantom is the other one that uh, comes to mind as well. Um, these are all uh, ways that you can connect uh, with your Ledger device and you can manage your assets potentially without using Ledger, Ledger Live if you wanted. Let's say there's an outage as well. Um, there's none, uh, no major ones that I'm aware of at this stage. But I actually showed this yesterday. You can always check, double check at status.ledger.com if you need to. So looks like we're all good. So just something to keep in mind if you guys wanted to uh, you know, manage those assets uh, with third party uh, with third party wallets. I, I like to give all the good people that I speak to as many options as you can um, because it's really good to, you know, be able to ch double check if you can double check multiple block explorers, you can double check, you know, with multiple wallets if something is issue, uh, some, an issue is happening. Um, I mean, I'm in a, a very lucky position that I can have multiple ledger devices to be able to check with multiple devices as well as uh, potentially multiple computers as well. So something not everyone might have the, would potentially have the, uh, have the ability to do, but definitely something that uh, I can potentially suggest doing to, you know, uh, to troubleshoot if you guys get a hold of us, uh, need to get a hold of us. Um, that's pretty much all that I wanted to mention with regards to that. Um, I'll see if there's any uh, questions that might not have been uh, tackled at the moment. The last one that I can see is actually from uh, Crypto Gill. I mentioned that if you can transact, even if you do not have your ledger, uh, meaning sell or buy. Um, it's actually a good, interesting question. Um, one thing that you'd be uh, able to do is definitely be able to receive assets. Now, it doesn't require um, your private keys to actually receive anything in particular. Uh, so actually, um, it, you don't need to sign any transactions to actually uh, receive it in particular. But if you're going to sell, it means you actually have to uh, um, send those assets to an exchange or to a decentralized exchange to actually sell those assets. So if that's the case, you would have to have your ledger device. But 
if it's like, let's say it's a real emergency, um, not something we would generally not recommend actually, but something that is possible is importing the recovery phrase. Um, again, don't normally recommend it. If you if your computer is compromised, it could be something that uh, um, it could be something that you know uh, could compromise the security of your assets. But if that's uh, um, if you do have you know if you're able to if you want to sell the assets, you most likely will need the ledger device um, uh, to you know sign the transaction. Hopefully that does answer your question. Um, but yeah, if you have any more crypto gear, we'll uh, see if we can give you a hand from there. Techno Wiz uh, asks, um, is there a video or simple explanation for, um, uh, is there a video or simple explanation to get your Ledger Nano X? You simply lost your four digit password. So I'm assuming you mean your pin there and that you have your recovery phrase so that you can get back into it. Um, now, with regards to that, um, I'll actually um, send in particular the setup as a new device. Oh, sorry. Actually, first thing we'd want to do since you forgot the um, forgot the pin is to actually to reset uh, the device. Techno is essentially um, it's the recovery phrase that um, it's the recovery phrase that has the um, you know determines the actual um, determines the addresses that you can have access to and everything like that. And uh, you know, once you reset that, once you can, you can therefore restore it. And I'll just actually send you the link for that as well, TechnoWiz, um, with your existing recovery phrase. Now, the once you've done that, you can set it up with whatever pin that you'd want, um, and then you'd be able to um, manage the assets from there. So, the first thing, reset, and then you can restore. Um, they've, you can see that the, there's a video here that you can actually follow along with as well. Um, so um, those would be the general steps uh, that we'd normally suggest with regards to if you forgot the pin, um, and especially if you have the recovery phrase, you can actually go about and uh, restore it with the existing one that you have in particular. Um, I think, yeah, you mentioned you have the recovery phrase, so that's perfect, and that way uh, you can go through that. Now, with regards to, um, with regards to, uh, I know you mentioned that you're disabled and you can only use one hand. Um, I wouldn't have any additional um, steps that I would be able to think of that would be able to assist you, especially with the um, existing devices that we have out at the moment. Um, the ledger stacks uh, potentially might be a better um, user experience because it's uh, got a um, it's got it's a touch screen that uh, you're able to uh, interact with. So in, it could be something you could consider. Although um, one thing to mention there is that uh, if uh, it is currently uh, sold out, but you can actually redeem one if you purchase a redemption NFT on the website in particular. Um, uh, no whiz. I know you just mentioned that the support site is terribly annoying. I will definitely pass on that feedback. We're always trying to make sure uh, you guys have a bit of time with that. So um, yeah, definitely make sure to pass that on as well. Uh, but hopefully, yeah, you should be able to go through those steps and get yourself all set up again, especially with that existing recovery phrase. Now, uh, I've got so uh, maybe not so starving musician. I see that Charles has actually answered a part of that there. So I'm actually going to read all of that out as well. Um, any advice for Ledger owners in Canada? I'm having trouble buying crypto through Ledger Live, uh, MoonPay, I think you uh, corrected, uh, and other options don't seem to work. Uh, Charles mentioned, um, if you can't get any Ledger Live buy options to work, you can use a centralized source, uh, so Coinbase, uh, and then send uh, that to your Ledger secured uh, uh, account or address, which is exactly uh, what I'd be suggesting as well. Um, the reason uh, for that is because uh, kind of when you're in Ledger Live, so I'll just jump back in here, you can see because I'm based uh, in a particular location for buy and sell, the things that uh, that you guys uh, get, um, the options that you guys get will be different based on where you are, uh, based on what the infrastructure sees as to your current location in particular, actually. So um, with that being the case, everything's going to be different. And I mean, actually for myself as well, I generally use uh, either the buy tab here um, and a lot of the cases I would also potentially be using uh, 
a I would also actually potentially be using a centralized source like Binance as well. So those are the potential sources that I'd been thinking of in particular. Um, now, it can, yeah, it can depend on where you are. Uh, so it might be best to do uh, your research in terms of uh, what would be best for you. Um, all right, so let's see if we can uh, go on and answer a couple more questions here as well. Uh, I think TechnoWiz, you mentioned a live person uh, would be hugely helpful. Um, this is definitely why we uh, uh, try to do as many of these uh, chats as possible. Um, we do have a lot of um, uh, we do have a lot of uh, uh, capacity for uh, people to do live chat as well. Although, uh, if I'm frank, a lot of the times they are uh, quite busy as well. So there can be uh, kind of. It can be tough, I totally understand, uh, to try and get some uh, uh, live assistance. Uh, but I'm definitely going to be here, you know, trying to be here every week. Um, we've got um, next one that in this time zone definitely is going to at least be the Twitter spaces, which is on Friday. So definitely something uh, that you can check out as well. Um, but if you, TechnoWiz, if you have any more questions, yeah, definitely uh, hit us up. Um, uh, set us up with more questions. I'll try to answer them as best as I can uh, while I'm here as well. Um, all right, so I think I had a shout up uh, mention here from Lulu Jones. Uh, we'll show better safe than sorry. We'll try this weekend. Ah, it looks like you've got a um, answering a question uh, from previously as well. Um, boom. And I do see uh, some qu a question here, uh, Deja, you've mentioned, do you guys have any job opportunities for customer support uh, for our website? Um, definitely something you can check out. Um, I think it's ledger, it's just on the ledger.com. I don't know that there's anything uh, directly uh, mentioned that's open at the moment, but uh, boom, let me just scroll down to the bottom. I think it is under careers, partners support, pa doo -doo -doo -doo. There we go, jobs, join us. Um, and you can double check there if you'd want as well. Um, so uh, maybe we might see you, maybe see how you go with that one. We've got um, Infinity with another question as well. What do you recommend to store your seed phrase? Um, really, really interesting question actually. Um, there are a couple of things that we generally recommend because remember, we would never, never recommend for you guys to actually store this you know, on a on a digital device like your computer. If you if you you know, just pop in and then, you know a notepad for example, and you just and you just type in your seed phrase. It's not definitely definitely not the uh, uh, process that we'd ever recommend for you guys to store your seed phrase. Um, generally speaking, we would be suggesting you see here uh, some of these offline uh, storage solution storage solutions. Um, why would that be? Is because just like the way that you store the recovery phrase on the ledger device, um, when you store these offline, um, you know, there's no digital uh, hack that could happen that could potentially put your assets at risk. So these are the kinds of things that we'd be uh, generally suggesting. Um, there are other potential solutions as well. Uh, but generally, I find that the simpler the solution, the better. You can see here with this one, you just enter in the first four letters of each word that you have. Um, and uh, that, because each first four, the first four letters of each word is unique, and if you have the first four letters, you'll be able to therefore know exactly which word uh, that is in the BIP39 list, the list of words that you'd be um, picking the words or the, that is generated from. So those are the ones we generally recommend. Just definitely, definitely, you know, don't put it on a cloud, never put it, you know, um, and also don't put it with the device as well, generally speaking, because if if you put it together, then someone that uh, comes past it and picks it up is going to be able to not only see uh, the recovery phrase, they're going to actually see the device as well, and they can actually use them uh, in, in conjunction with each other. So really, yeah, don't, uh, definitely not something we'd ever recommend, uh, generally speaking, putting them together um, as well. So yeah, definitely try uh, to use an offline solution uh, as well. Now, 
Next question, uh, we got uh, Morian Gaming. They mentioned, how does Ledger make sure that your wallet phrase, so I'm assuming you mean the recovery phrase, is unique? Um, and how does it make sure that it's not been generated previously? Actually, uh, a really great, um, uh, a really great article is in our academy that actually goes through um, the specific math behind how um, likely it would be, in general, first of all, to actually generate. If, if done randomly, so we'll get to that in a bit, but if done randomly, um, how likely it is to actually get uh, a recovery phrase that is the same as someone else's. So I'll actually see if I can get that up real quick. I don't actually remember, I think I can remember. Uh, and essentially, it. I th there we go. I think I saw the math somewhere here. Um, the... 24 words, um, if I remember right off the top of my head, it's going to be kind of like winning the lottery multiple times over. Um, and that's more, more likely uh, than yeah, someone guessing the recovery phrase correctly, right? So that's the first part. It's just the, permu the number of permutations. It's so, so high that it is basically nigh on, nigh on impossible that it appro basically approaches zero. Humans are really, really bad at uh, really large numbers, and so it's really uh, quite tough to comprehend that exactly. I'm actually going. I actually really want to get that in particular. Um, uh, let's see if I can get that up. Now, the next thing though is how do we determine? Um, how do we determine if the private keys, you know, the recovery phrase, are going to be random. Now, it uses, um, at, we use as multiple sources as best we can for, you know, uh, trying to create basically as close to a random number generator as we can. And it's about using a really, really good source of entropy, all right? So um, being that it's done so on the device itself, um, that's how we can, that's how we can uh, basically um, be as sure as we can that um, uh, the recovery phrase has not been generated before. Um, ledger uh, phrase, same. I'm actually gonna try and bring up uh, that in particular because it will give us some more details um, about that as well. Um, probability. If I could remember these all off the top of my head, I'd be, uh, uh, really, really, I'd be probably a genius. But here we go, how we generate it. You can actually, I'm actually bring that support article down here um, as well. Um, oh yes, here we go. So two to the power of 256, and you can see that number here. That's the number of possible, um, uh, that's the number of possible combinations that you can have. And so, yeah, so, I mean, maybe someone could, you know, go about and continue to generate those numbers. If you generate a million per second, how many seconds is it going to take to actually uh, to, to actually guess all of them? That's how many, how many, you know, how many days, how many years, how many millennia is that, uh, you know, you can see here. And not only that, you'd have to guess, uh, continue to guess other things as well. If, let's say if there's a passphrase on top as well, it could be something else that you might need to consider. And you can see here as well, the device is gener uh, generates a, a series of 256 bits with our number generator on the device. So hopefully that answers your question there, Morian Gaming. Um, now, Lucas uh, mentions, hello, I was just wondering if I'm the only one who has access to your private keys. Uh, you are indeed. Um, now that is only in the, in that is only if, right, that you do not put your recovery phrase online, you do not put it uh, anywhere else uh, other than, you know, the ledger device, or you put it, uh, you know, uh, and or you put it in one of those storage solutions that I mentioned, those are probably going to be uh, the, the solutions we normally recommend. And then, then for, and then you've also mentioned, how come that if I lose my ledger, I can just set it up with my new, with my secret phrase? Who checks if this is right? This is really cool. This is a really interesting question because it's about the math of the, uh, of how you determine it, right? Like it's the recovery phrase 
that's the that's the thing that you have. That's the the specific thing. That's the series, the random series of bits, essentially, uh, the number of the words that you get. That's the specific thing that you have, and that only you have. Now, how do um, how do you do? How do you continue going forward after that as well? Um, basically, using that uh, randomness, you actually use you know uh, actually the derivation path to actually generate your public and private key, and that private key. Uh, after all those steps is what's used to generate the device, uh, generate your address, and that private key is what's used to sign your transactions. I think I just uh, um, so you're the only one that has that private key, and therefore you're the only one that can, uh, you know, uh, derive the uh, sign the uh, transactions at that particular address. That's why um, you're the only one that has access. Um, we don't have access because the the derivation path for each coin or each network, generally speaking, is going to be set. So you can actually use uh, 44, 60, 0, 0 for Ethereum, for example, um, and that would be the derivation path for um, uh, for Ethereum. And that's going to be the same, generally speaking, across Ethereum, right? So this is how you know, being that the recovery phrase is the only thing that uh, is the thing that you have access to and is the thing that only you have access to, that's how you know uh, that your recovery phrase, uh, that's how you know that you're the only one that has access to it. Now, um, if you lose your ledger, you know, um, this, the ledger device, the same ledger device is going to be able to take those same steps from the application that has the derivation path and is able, go, is able to derive the same, in the same way with that derivation path, but it needs the exact recovery phrase. And that's why um, you're the only one that has access to it. So the device is what checks it that, that it's right, essentially. So hopefully that answers it. If you need any more clarification, definitely let me know because I did uh, ramble a bit there as I normally do. Now, next question comes from Hoppy. Is the stack still shipping it in March? Uh, for those that pre-ordered, the website says, the website now says May. Um, now the website um, does say May. Um, I don't have any additional information uh, on that at the moment, but definitely keep, uh, and I and uh, go from there. Um, next gen, next gen grown. Good morning again, mate. Um, now you mentioned bulk sales on OpenSea have been fixed yet, or they still have to confirm fifty times uh, if your bi uh, bill is selling. Uh, if you're selling bulk selling fifty NFTs, um, I don't have any uh, update on that in particular. I would suspect that would be something that. Um, if you're, let's, I mean, let's just jump onto OpenSea now. Um, if, you, if you're using OpenSea, um, I would say that would be something that they would have to deploy on OpenSea's end. Basically, you would want, um, they would want to be able to, um, they would want to be able to create a transaction uh, basically with all 50 of those in particular. So I'm not sure if that's something that we'd uh, have to be doing on our end. Uh, but definitely get a hold of us if you have any um, uh, any examples that, of that in particular. I can we can probably we probably have a, a way to reach out to them internally um, if it's something specifically only with Ledger and uh, OpenSea as well. Um, so yeah, mention my name as well if you need to. Next year, you can pop that uh, ticket in the chat and I'll see we can uh, actually uh, we actually liaise with them accordingly. I'm just going to uh, answer Moran Gaming's qu uh, question there because it is uh, in all caps. Uh, you're kind of scaring me there. Um, does it have a processor for generating C phrase? Is it is it has that fast processor in? It has the generate the 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 chip that generates the recovery phrase is the secure element. Doesn't need to compute all of those uh, all of those particular. Um, uh, where is it? where I had that up in before? Um, it doesn't need to generate all of those recovery phrases, but it uses that random number generator, as Nicholas Ledger has mentioned there as well. Um, I had that up before actually. So that is something that uh, we uh, would generate on the uh, secure element, as he's mentioned there. Um, but going back to the other questions above, um, you can see Infinity mention. Um, uh, thank you. Any plans to add other swap partners other than Changely? Um, definitely uh, something that 
uh, if you have a partner in mind, you can uh, hit us up. Um, we're always trying to find new partners to uh, add in particular. Um, so I wouldn't be able to necessarily mention any specific plan or anything like that. Not that you know, I'm I'm just a I'm just a guy just chatting about uh, crypto. Um, so not anything that I'd be able to mention. But yeah, we're always looking to add um, to work with as many people as we can. Um, Infinity, you've also asked, is it safe to update Ledger Live through the application? Um, it is indeed. You can see um, normally you'd get a, uh, uh, a banner that would appear up the top when you'd want to uh, update Ledger Live, as well as potentially um, a dot here um, if you'd want to update the uh, Ledger device as well. Um, the Ledger device firmware, you can, mine's just locked at the moment, but you can update that there um, as well going forward. All right, so hopefully that answers your question. You should also be able to update that through ledger.com as well. That's another thing that um, I uh, do mention to customers. Um, you can actually just uh, um, overwrite the install. Uh, basically, you can just go to apps and services, ledger live, and you can just uh, um, download the application and reinstall it as well. Um, it's another option. I generally would just say that the best option is just to do it within the uh, uh, within the application itself as well. Um, but one thing to mention uh, is if you are updating the firmware, for example, you might get a um, an update on screen, and it might say, "Hey, um, you want to keep your um, you want to keep your ledger uh, you want to keep your uh, recovery phrase with you." And the reason for that um, is because if your recovery phrase, um, if your ledger device uh, gets, let's say, wiped, for example, let's say I have, um, I unplug it in the middle of an update and something happens. If I restore, um, if that, you know, um, resets the device back to factory settings, um, then I might need to just put in my recovery phrase into the device. Remember, not into Ledger Live. Um, if I put it back into the recovery, for, uh, back into the device, then I'll be able to manage my assets accordingly. So it's just something uh, that we generally suggest, just so you always have access to your assets in particular. Um, all right, let's keep going as well. Um, you can see here uh, that next gen grown. You've mentioned uh, you can use MetaMask in the bulk sale and doesn't confirm each individual NFT with a MetaMask. Then. Uh, MetaMask and Ledger sometime or Ledger or with Ledger Connect that you're getting that issue. Um, it's a one click compared to sitting there 50. Yes, 50, um, 50 is a lot actually. Um, so uh, definitely, yeah, if you um, definitely get a hold of us, it's not something that I remember. I'm just double check internally if we have uh, uh, any mention of that in particular. Um, but yeah, we'll definitely something I'd love to uh, have, have a look at that for you. If you want to raise a case with us, we can we can sort that out with you from there. Um, now, next question I've got was from uh, Zero G. Um, how do you store ICP? So I'm assuming that's a, a internet computer and not insane clown posse um, on a ledger device. Um, I'm just going to bring up the details for that uh, here. Uh, Paul. So first thing, oh, let's bring that up. Uh, you can see here, um, you can install the ICP, so the internet computer application on your Ledger device. I can actually just bring that up if I want to uh, here as well. Um, and then once, what we go, what we do from there um, is that we would, um, I'll just exit the Cardano application. Now it is unlocked. And then we can just go and find out our application um, within the MyLedger part. And then you can see up the top here that you'd be using uh, the NS, NNS DAP to actually manage the ICP um, in particular. So you'd be able to store it on your Ledger device um, and then you'd be able to manage it with a third party decentralized application. So you can see that here. Um, you can see also that it does require a third party wallet as I mentioned there. So hopefully that uh, helps you there. Jim C mentions when will the ledger stacks be available to people that didn't pre-order. Um, that would be, in, if you mean uh, in particular, when you'd be able to, you know, 
order it. You can still order it if you purchase that uh, redemption token on uh, on Rareable. We normally mention OpenSea, any of the secondary uh, on any part of the secondary market, and then you can actually redeem it on our website. Um, so that is something you can do there. Um, they're currently looking. We're currently looking uh, in terms of time frame for uh, when we're going to be able to release that in particular, though. So I uh, do keep in touch uh, about that in particular. No, I don't have any more specific time frames for you um, in, uh, at all, unfortunately. All right. So just going to keep going. We've got a couple we've got 10 more minutes left so um if you guys have any more questions just pop them in the chat i actually just uh and i've now ended up answering all you guys questions so um we can go from there next thing grown I, uh, and anyone else if you guys want to get a hold of us you can raise a case um you can go to support.ledger.com in the bottom right hand side um, it's obscured by my silly mug but in the bottom right hand side you'll see a button that says contact us and that'll be in purple on so i'm told i'm so I'm, or so i'm told um and then you can actually go new conversation and go from there i won't actually go into this too much and actually get a hold of someone right now uh but you should be able to head to new conversation you can even mention uh, you go through all the steps, you just need to mention what it might be in relation to, uh, and then you should be able to go from there to actually um, uh, raise a case as well. Um, good. Now, other than that, yep, hopefully if you get a hold of me next gen grown, yeah, we'll, we'll have a chat with you. Um, you can even pop the case number in the chat if you do uh, uh, get through that as well. Um, now, let's keep going in terms of questions. Um, Morian Gaming, uh, just as a heads up, I did answer the question. The uh, re recovery phrase is generated on the secure element. We actually had uh, um, another uh, kind guest as well. Nicholas Ledger also mentioned that as well. It's based on, uh, it is uh, hardware wallets. I'll read it out specifically. Hardware wallets use the RNG, uh, random number generator embedder on the secure element to generate the recovery phrase. So mnemonic phrase, mnemonic seed, that kind of thing. So hopefully, uh, that goes through that as well for you. You can always jump onto our academy uh, to read through that as well, and the help center too. But before I get too far ahead of myself, um, I had another question up here. Um, boom. Uh, another question from Lucas. They mentioned, I've read some accusations oh, on Reddit and that since Ledger's, Ledger's firmware is not open source, they can store your private key and use it themselves. Can you confirm this is false? I can definitely confirm that we would not, uh, we do not store and use uh, the recovery phrase ourselves. Um, I mean, that's that's a that's pretty crazy. Uh, but now, with regards to uh, the the firmware in particular, if you're not already aware, Ledger Live is actually open source and. It is the way that you interact with the device. So, you know, sending and receiving and everything like that is part would be part of that flow within Ledger Live. And that part is open source. So you can actually check that out in particular. Now, with regards to, you know, the Ledger device uh, not being uh, open source, that would be more with regards to, I would say, the secure element. I don't want to speak actually out of turn too much, uh, but the secure element would be the part there. Um, and it doesn't have any kind of way to actually, you know, beam that to us or anything like that. So it's not, it's not like we're actually going about and getting those private keys from you. Definitely not. Definitely not. So uh, hopefully that puts you more at ease. I think Charles actually answered that as well. Um, and yes, um, no other hacks. Um, so you can... So Ledger, nor anyone can access your recovery phrase. These are generated on the device and never leave the device, neither by USB, Bluetooth, or other hacks. I think I mentioned it earlier um, as a way um, that any any way that we're going to interact with a device, the Ledger uh, Live or the you know the third-party wallet even that you're using will ask the Ledger device to sign a transaction. The device therefore gets the device actually signs that transaction and then it gives it the signed transaction back to Ledger Live, back to MetaMask, back to TallyHo, whatever you're using as well. So in the same way that Charles mentioned, it doesn't leave the device at all. That's really important in how we 
make sure that's secure. Um, but yes. Um, now, next question I've got was Austin Anumerodos. Uh, before I finish up, I've got last five minutes. Um, you have a first gen Toshiba updated and even downloaded the outdated software config and it still gives an outdated error. So the first thing I'd be asking is, uh, what version of Windows are you using? Um, you've updated it, that'd be great. Um, it would definitely depend on what version of Windows you might be using. Um, so uh, that's be the first thing I check. If you're using Windows 10 or later, uh, definitely try and get a hold of us. We can uh, have a chat with you, see what we go, see what happens from there. Um, or Jim C with the I'm down with the clown yo ICP. That's great. Love that. Uh, shout out to you, Jim. Um, all right. And uh, next couple of questions here. We've got Charles uh, as well giving us a shout out. Um, but yes, um, hopefully next gen grown, get a hold of us. We'll have a chat with you. Now, Marianne Gaming, I don't see the question about the virus. Uh, that you've mentioned in particular. Let's have a look uh, at what you've seen up there. Um, it can take some time if you haven't noticed to uh, go through that in particular. Um, so hopefully, um, yes, uh, let's have a look. It's about a virus. Um, yeah, nothing that I can see in particular. Sometimes it can, uh, um, when uh, the, what is it called? Uh, the chat for YouTube can be a little, um, specific and um, if the question doesn't come up it might have to do with either special characters or something like that or a link so just a heads up there um, Austin Windows 10 it's definitely something we'd want to look into for you um, so uh, get a hold of us uh, support.ledger.com right hand side um, definitely Windows 10 should be uh, something you should be able to manage Ledger live with I'd love we would probably want to see the um, uh, the specific error message that you're getting, see if you can troubleshoot that further. But definitely my, my work computer actually is running, running Windows 10 as well. Um, so I'm just gonna speed through the last couple questions since I got the last three minutes as well. Um, so the more with the heads up, these tutorials are very helpful. Thank you, no, thank you. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions or anything like that, always happy to have a chat, we're here um, nearly every day uh, throughout the time zones as well. Um, next gen grown. Um, just gonna say it, bro, you need an Apple device so you can start playing with Ledger Connect. I'm loving it so far. Amazing, I can search the web and be connected through Ledger Connect. Yeah, I, I am stoked to get my hands on Ledger Connect. Um, probably can steal my, uh, my partner's uh, phone, maybe we can see, we can test it out with that one, see how we go with that. But you, you could also mention you can't, you really can't wait for Google Chrome support. So that'd be pretty crazy as, uh, pretty great as well. Deja mentioned, is the storage of the Ledger Nano X um, enough for multiple stuff to possibly do in the future? Um, I would say yes. Um, I mean, I, let's say I've installed one, two, three, four, five apps, I think, on this one. And, you know, it doesn't account for any tokens that you might manage and things like that as well. So it is definitely something that uh, I wouldn't expect you to need to, you know, uh, install and uninstall apps. But with that being said, instead of the, being that the coins aren't actually on the device, um, I know it's something we mention a lot. Um, it's only the uh, applications that are on the device uh, and then the recovery phrases on the device. Then being with that being said, it's not, uh, you can, you know, continue to manage a, a large number of, you know, applications on the device itself. I don't think that they're gonna be necessarily like one megabyte in the future or anything like that. So um, no worries about that at all. And just to finish up the last question, Jim C uh, giving us the shout out, thank you. I uh, just wanna say thank you for my peace of mind with the security that my ledger gives, a ledger user here for life here. No, thank you. Um, definitely in a privileged position to you know have a chat with you guys um, about all of this. I think we always say, um, don't give out your 24 words. Don't sign any transactions you don't trust. Um, yeah, really, really want you guys to stay safe out there, keep your assets secure, and uh, you know, make sure that you guys stay safe in the markets out there. So yeah, um, we'll be here. Um, I think the next one that uh, I will be on will be on Thursday, and we'll have another AMA um, as well, uh, and we'll have uh, another 
uh, guest on as well, so you won't have to see my face all the time. And uh, we'll have a Twitter stream on Friday as well. So yeah, um, hopefully you guys have uh, been having a good week. Have a great rest of the week. Um, we'll see you uh, in a couple of days. And yeah, thank you. Have a good day.